Hi, it's Chris Watkin here and I'm joined by Ellie Rees, who is an estate agent in London. She owns our own firm with her husband, Brickworks. Um, Ellie, how difficult is it to be a mother, a wife, and run your own estate agency? Talk to me. It's really, really, really hard. Yeah, it's really difficult. Um, and I speak as a parent, not just as a mother. Um, but I do think it is particularly difficult for women because traditionally and typically they take on the lion's share of the domestic labour and chores, the childcare um, and all of the other stuff that goes with it, as well as the bit which is running the business. Um, so it's tough. Um, I have to say how lucky I am that I am with a partner who is very much shares my values and has the same belief in terms of um, equality. Um, and so we've set things up deliberately and by design to be 50-50 in the workplace and 50-50 at home. And we're an advantage in a way because we do the same job and we work for the same company. Do you ever feel guilty that you're trying to spin all these plates and one will drop? They do drop, but I think you, in life anyway, have to accept that you're not going to be perfect and you're not going to be brilliant for all of the people all of the time. And I'm a firm believer in imperfect action, which is doing it and getting it done and you could sit there and tweak it forever. So. Um, I try not to drop the plates. I don't want to drop the plates at work. I probably drop the plates more at home. I probably take my responsibility at work more seriously than my responsibilities at home. Do I feel guilty? Um, I think all parents feel guilty to a certain extent. Um, but I think more it's about um, feeling stretched and pulled and that I'm not doing any one thing brilliantly but I some in some way I think that makes a good estate agent because I think I used to really want to be um brilliant at something you know and I knew I always knew I was a jack of all trades master of none and I used to think of that in a negative way I used to think that's not great I wish that I was an opera singer or a football player or a but actually being a jack of all trades being really good at quite a lot of stuff okay. makes for a brilliant estate agent I think or certainly running your own business okay that that's a great skill set to have rather than being brilliant at one thing do you fear the judgment of others the fact that you are you know not going to be at your child's you know a recital or something like that when you're selling houses or is that a case of planning ahead and would you ask that question to a man who is running his own estate agency? No, I wouldn't. Isn't that interesting? It is. So maybe there's your unconscious bias. Indeed. I mean, I did. Would you ask Rex? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I deliberately asked that question <laughs> of course. to be a foil. Um, <laughs> of course. Yet. I can't, you know, I can't because there's a greater cause at stake. Okay, okay but there's a different relationship between your between your children mm. as a mother, as a, as a father. Again, is, is that society or is that just? Um, actually, I hope in our instance it's not, but I think it's probably, a, we're a bit unusual. Um, Rex does all the laundry. I mean, okay. I heard Abigail Gray saying this, you've got to set the terms from the beginning. And I think there is- Well, that's why I want to take this conversation yeah. is, is, is what would message would you, would you be uh, to, to anyone who, who's doing this? I mean, if you don't mind me saying the self-employed model which is a separate subject in itself, appears to be a better fit yeah. for women wanting to set up their own estate agency. Yeah. I am really interested in the self-employed model, and I agree. I think um, it presents as having huge benef benefits for working parents. I mean, men and women, you know, I hear a lot of men saying, I'm taking the rest of the day off and I'm going to go and, like, run around the field with the kids. Um, I think that... 
particularly post pandemic. Okay, we can see that there are options for flexible working. We don't need to be apologetic about leaving meeting early because we've got to go and get the kids. We don't need to squeeze ourselves and how we are innately as women into this particularly male way of doing things. That said, and I think the self-employed model supports that, I really do. That said, and I haven't got to the bottom of this yet, um, I wonder how it suits people with much, much younger children or women who actually want to have a baby because what do you do in terms of maternity, cover and pay and leave? You know, what if you're, there's a great book called Pregnant Then Screwed um, about a woman who was actually in a conventional job, employed, who just got fired ostensibly. And the stories that you hear are unbelievable, but where is the support in the, in the, in the self-employed model for, for those women? That's my question. Well, there isn't in the there isn't an answer, but I mean, there isn't one. But then the, there's a school of thought to say is 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 go 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 and learn your trade by being an employed estate agent. If you're going to have a family, have the family and take the benefit of of paid maternity leave, and then you know on the assumption that that most, not all, women have their children in their twenties and early thirties, you then move on. Um, and, and set up your own agency in the later 30s again but then there's a disadvantage as well isn't there we can't we're not there we're is, not going to change that's government. also as if life goes to that kind of a plan i mean it just no. doesn't but i also think that you are i've heard women say this who are working in conventional employed agency that in their 20s and 30s it's like they're being stared at, at like a time bomb you know waiting for their bosses you know to to tell their bosses that they're gonna you know they're gonna go off and have a family um, and actually that's a terrible assumption to make because there are women who want to have children that can't have children there are women that don't want to have children thank you very much and there are women like me who want to have a career first and have their kids much later I mean I had my second when I was 40 so I think we just have to do away with those assumptions in the first place um, again I think it represents um, a re I think we need to learn from the, from the self-employed model, definitely. I don't think it's a panacea and I don't think it's perfect. Um, and Do you think, therefore, that the, 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 the women that are already in self-employed estate agency need to be telling their stories more to yeah. to, to almost create almost like a guiding light to say, well, if she, she's done it, I can do it? 100%. This is how we do it. And actually, the Women in the State Agency Facebook group, which I've mentioned before, which is run by Claire Hughes and um, Liana Aporto-Brown, who is um, president-elect mm. for Property Mark, um, I was talking to them the other day and actually one thing that struck me that they and they're both self-employed by the way they're both with exp um one thing that struck me was that they said the reason they'd set up the the group was to create a safe place for women to talk about their experiences and to tell their narratives which by implication means that the workplace isn't a safe place to do that necessarily or they're not heard and interestingly that the, the facebook group is only open to to women estate agents. Yeah, and I think we need to broaden the conversation. I mean, okay. we need men on board. Okay, a hundred percent. There's a great book called. But, but you're here. Sorry. you're here now, aren't yes. you? I mean, I mean, my message to you is, if you are a woman estate agent and you've got an interesting story to tell, I want you sat there. <laughs> you know, I invited you along because I spotted you on social media and I thought, she's interesting. Thanks. Yeah. Going back to doing you know going it alone and doing it on your own you also have to have a huge um support system in place I and mean, you mm -hmm. can't do it if you don't have it doesn't have to be a male partner it could be a female partner but you probably have to have a partner It'd be very difficult to do it as a single parent for example mm -hmm. again i think once your kids are older if you have kids it probably works really well um certainly in terms of but again this is goes back to creating a different type of a state agency service, which is not about volume and transactions and numbers. It's about service. It's about something else. Again, Claire is someone who says, by design, she she wants to have a lighter workload for various personal reasons. But if you can offer a better service to the clients, all the of best. Course. Thank you for your time today. Um, what I'd like to do is talk in the other videos and take this subject a little bit further, if that's okay. Please do.